And um, one of the things that I have been pondering, by the way, you got your Bibles here? Please turn to the book of Luke chapter 10. The book of Luke chapter 10. And as you do that, and as we get going, I want to, um, I want to uh, remind you that, because um, oftentimes we think that we are just trophies in, in God's trophy case. Um, but if you know anything about trophies, you know, they just sit up there r nice and shiny, right? <laughs> like, it's, like it's there. You, you walk in and, well, hey, what's that trophy? Yeah, Whoa, well, that's my trophy when I won the 1978 Karate Championship or whatever might be the case. It's up there nice and shiny. The medals that we get, they, we put them up and they sit there nice and shiny. And we tend to forget that, yes, in fact, you are a, a trophy f um, for God and from God, but it's to be used. It's to be used. Say amen with you with me. If it's to be what now? Used. You're not just some trophy in a trophy case all shined up just sitting there. No, God has saved you and has cleansed you to be used of Him. Much like our cars, if I can give you the weak analogy. Uh, you know, I, I wash it. Anybody that knows me, I like my car clean, especially inside. Uh, I'll change the oil, I'll rotate the tires, but guess why I do that? Not for it to sit there in my driveway. I do that so as to use it. So as to use it. So as to get function out of it. And I, and I think that oftentimes we tend to forget that God saved us to have a relationship with Him. No doubt. First and foremost. But there's more to it than that. And then we're here and He wants to use you. And He wants to use you. And so we rejoice for Sue. And uh, I rejoice that we are able to be a part of that. You're able to be a part of that through our support of her um, financially. And most of all, listen, through our support of her through prayer. Amen? Through what now? Prayer. Through prayer. So please, you know, I always ask you a lot of times before we leave, I'll, I'll tell you, pick a person. Don't tell them and pray for them. Well, here, I'm going to tell you right now, okay? This week, I want you to pick... Sue, okay? And I want you to pick Soromania. And this week, collectively and individually, we will be praying for her. Amen, family? Amen. So, who are you picking? Sue. Sue. Usually I tell you, don't tell me who you pick. Pick it on your own. But today, I'm letting you know, you pick her. And make sure you pick up um, whatever you need to pick up back there when it comes to the newsletter and the like. So that way, your heart, by the Lord and from the Lord, can be knit to the great work that's going on there. Who knows? Once we get over there, once, once that trumpet sounds and we're there in the presence of the Lord, um, what great work we're going to see was actually done there. The stuff that we can't even see today with our eyes. Amen, family? Amen. Lives that are saved, souls that were saved. Um, who knows if one of those girls, instead of having an abortion, is having a young boy and that young boy or young girl is going to be, if the Lord tarries, is going to be the one that, that, that comes up with the invention for the cure for cancer, for AIDS. Seriously, that's how uh, intense and deep the reality of all this is. Amen, family? Amen. Got your Bibles there? Let's jump in to the Luke chapter 10, Lucas capítulo 10. And even as I said that in Spanish, forgive me, I'm all over the place today. I think it's the coffee, um, the enormous amount of coffee that I've had. I want you to pray that which I... I laid the groundwork for you on Wednesday night, so I want to remind you, please pray. The Lord has stirred our hearts, we believe, to start a Spanish translation uh, ministry. So please pray for that. Um, the, the, the first step in that is that the Lord would raise up servants. So uh, please pray for that. Continue and pray. Again, I laid the groundwork for you on Wednesday night, um, but what I need you to do now is pray. Um, the Lord has stirred my heart with a lot of Spanish speakers that I, we have come in contact with that want to attend. Um, and we want them to hear the word that's being taught in English, in Spanish. Amen, family? Right? And, and we just sense in our hearts that that very well might be the case. No big deal. Where God guides, God provides. But um, pray for that. And maybe even as I speak right now, you might be one of those that the Lord is calling to translate. I don't know. Only you would know that. So uh, please pray for that. Very important. Well, got your Bibles there. Um, Luke chapter 10. Lucas capítulo 10. We're going to continue the story here with our Lord. Functioning and, and, and dealing with these individuals. 
I remind you that his uh, ministry, first and foremost, is to the 11 apostles and then the disciples that are there with him. He's laying the groundwork for them. Yes, he goes out and he teaches the masses, but really he's pouring into these individuals because very soon he's going to depart. And they're going to be the ones that are going to take the mantle. They're going to be the ones that are going to pull the cart in sharing God's love for the people. And so we, we, we tend to see that he's dealing with these individuals specifically over and over again, again, because he's preparing them and he's, and he's setting the stage for them. And, um, and so there you are, Luke chapter 10. We're going to pick up in verse 21. This is what he says. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit. Where did he rejoice? Tell me again, where did he rejoice? Very important, okay? Because, um, you know, we're, we're, we're dual individuals in the, as, as we function. Um, sometimes we, we are happy in the flesh. And sometimes there's a joy that comes from within. Um, and that's the rejoicing in the Spirit, if you will. I don't know if you've ever experienced that. Um, I don't know if you've ever tasted of that. I find more and more that believers now today, they don't know what that means. Um, because, you know, we're living in such a time and such an age that we really don't give too much. We're saved and we love God because God loves us. And, and, but we really don't give too much attention to the things of God in the sense that very few of us, if the truth be told, and I'm in that boat if I don't watch myself. Very few of us know what it is just to sit and spend time with the Lord. Very few of us know what it is to sit and just read a chapter of the Bible. You know, the, the, the written page is almost non-existent nowadays. Nobody knows what it is to sit and read the Bible with a pad next to them and, and just write a thought that God might have given them for the day or given her for the day. We just don't know what that is anymore. Now, I'm not saying you, 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 you. No, I don't know if it's you or if it's not. I just know that the more that I deal with believers, I understand and I realize, um, man, it's a very shallow and surface-like relationship that, again, might not be you. I don't know. Um, I know that if I don't watch myself and if I don't diligently persevere in saying, no, I am going to read today with a pad and a pencil, I won't do it. And people are so involved with life and work which, of course, we have to. Um, we're more interested in the, you know, half-hour sitcom, and we're more interested in the four-hour of watching television than we are than of opening this up and sitting for half an hour, even 10, 15 minutes with a pad. Um, and again, your salvation is not at risk because you don't do that. But again, what I say to you is that I've come to realize that very few people actually do this anymore in this day and age in 2018 it's shocking to me that you know it's just not a priority for us and therefore we're missing out on 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 what the old on on, on those that came before us on the heritage that we're allowed that we're given to have this incredible deep relationship with God we don't know what that is anymore again we're saved we're here we're singing no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Nobody's questioning that. Praise God. But we just don't know what that is anymore, to just to stay quiet, to, to, to be quiet before the Lord. Um, and so I want to remind you and encourage you. Um, think about that this week. Think about doing that. Think about setting 10 minutes and reading the proverb with, with a pad next to you, with a pencil, and writing whatever thought he might give you as you read. He wants to speak to you. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3 Call to me and I will answer and I will show you great and mighty things which you don't know he says Jeremiah 33 3 So my encouragement to you is let's get back to that If somehow you have let that go by the wayside hey get back to it this week What an opportunity Yes I know we work and we're tired and listen there's time there's time in the day we have time for everything else um, So here we see the Lord, and the response is, and what he says is that, man, he rejoiced in the Spirit. Look at that, verse 21. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things 
from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in your sight. Verse 22, all things. How many things? All. You know what all means in the Greek, right? All. Exactly. All means all. All things have been delivered to me, Jesus proclaims, by my Father. And no one knows who the Son is except the Father. And who the Father is except the Son. And the one to whom the Son wills to reveal Him. So he says, hey, no one knows the Father except the Son. No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one's going to know this unless the Father decides to reveal who the Son is. And if you've seen the Son, the Bible says that you've seen the Father. Amen? Amen. So the Lord, Jesus Christ, He divested Himself of all the glory, decided to put on this earth suit to walk amongst those that He wanted to save. Period. Look at verse 24, verse 23. Then he turned to his disciples and said privately, notice I told you he's dealing with them, blessed are the eyes which see the things that you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see what you see, which is what? The Son and the Father right in front of you, and have not seen it, and to hear what you hear, and have not heard it. In other words, he's telling them, I'm giving you the words of life. Men have given their lives to hear and to see what you are seeing and what you're hearing right here and right now. So what a privileged bunch they are. And listen, can I take it a step further? What a privileged bunch we are. <laughs> that God in his, who is rich in mercy and rich in grace has decided to look upon you and say, I'm sharing me with you. Period. I love that. Notice verse 25. And behold, a certain lawyer. Nothing wrong with lawyers, by the way. Amen? We have a couple of lawyers in this church, as a matter of fact. Yes, and, but so just so you know that th these were um, debaters of the law, if the truth be told. But anyway, so here we go. And, a, and behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, meaning Jesus, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What is your reading of it? Verse 27, So he, the lawyer, answered and said, You shall love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Verse 28, And he, Jesus, said to him, the lawyer, Hey, you've answered rightly. Do this and you will live. Your attention, please. Oh, yeah. That is a way to gain eternal life. The only problem was that, and the only problem is, it was, it was back then and it is today, that no one can fulfill that. No one can fulfill the law. No one can love the Lord with all their heart, soul, and mind. Look in the mirror. Do you? You know the answer to that. I'll look in the mirror. Do I? No, I don't know the answer to that. So immediately, I have failed. And so the Lord, speaking to this lawyer, said, Hey, it's real simple, man. Follow the law. If you do that, you are going to live, i.e. eternal life. Because in fact, that is the way to gain eternal life. But you and I know that that's, no mortal man can actually achieve that. And in fact, this is what Jesus was making very clear. See, because soon and very soon, He... Our Lord, the only one that did fulfill the law in, to, in its totality, hung on the cross for you and I. You know the gospel message. There is a righteous standard that God has set. You and I can't meet it. Therefore, there is a penalty to pay for us breaking the law. God knows. He knew. He knows that you and I can never Number one, keep the law that we are guilty. And number two, um, ever be able to pay enough to pay for that price of breaking the law. And so he sent his son to die on the cross for us. And here Jesus is telling the lawyer this. Something that the lawyer knew, by the way, for in fact he was a debater of the law. So he knew the law back and forth. 
And so God's like, the Lord's like, well, tell me. What, what, what do you think? How do you read the law? The lawyer speaks to him and tells him exactly that. So follow it, he says, and you will have eternal life. Notice. And he said to him, verse 28, you have answered rightly. In other words, you've told me. So do it, and you will live. And the lawyer, notice verse 29, but he, the lawyer, wanting to justify himself, I guess trying to be a smart aleck, maybe showing off, I don't know, said to Jesus, well then, who is my neighbor? Now, your attention, please, notice that two things were said by the lawyer. What's the law say, Jesus said to him? Well, to love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Right? And so then the, the lawyer says, okay, well, who's my neighbor? I don't know if you're seeing the implication. I don't know if you're seeing what's going on there, but if, if I'm looking at it and saying, oh, but this dude thinks that he's actually loving the Lord God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and so he only has number two to fulfill. Okay, Lord, I've, I've already accomplished number one, so here's number two, so tell me who's my neighbor so that I can accomplish that also. Check, check. Say amen if you're with me. Did you see he didn't ask, how do I love the Lord God with all my heart, soul, and mind? No, no. That was already a check in his book. I do love the Lord with all my heart, soul, and mind. Right? So tell me who's my neighbor so that I can fulfill that one also. So eh, he had already failed and messed up. Say amen if you're with me. Amen. Right? So it's good to know where you're at. The Lord, John 15, 5, without you, I can do nothing. Amen? Let me tell you, I haven't accomplished loving the Lord God with all my soul, heart, and mind. I don't miss Wednesdays and I don't miss Sundays. Right? Stick with me here because I've been called here. So I'm faithful to that calling. I'm faithful to you. Guess what? I still don't love the Lord with all my heart, soul, and mind. Sue is going back to Romania to serve the Lord there. I got, can I, can I, nobody's going to take her reward away. Can I tell you, I know for a fact that she's going to be more rewarded than me. <laughs> because I struggle driving, I don't know, six miles to get here sometimes. She's going to Romania, man. But can I tell you, she has not accomplished loving the Lord, her God, with all her soul, heart, and mind. Impossible. We've all missed the mark. Say amen if you're with me. Amen. It's good to understand that. I joke around and I always tell you, I'm one of the smartest guys in the world. You want to know why? Because I know I'm not. Did you get that? Did you get that? Right? Again, I say that jokingly, but it's kind of true. I'm one of the smartest guys in the world because I know that I'm not. And that already just gets me up here. See, I'm one of, those, I'm one of the most spiritual men that you'll ever come across. You want to know why? Because I know that I'm not. In other words, I am in just complete dependence on Him. John 15, 5, without Him, I can do nothing. Absolutely nothing. Even the breath that I just took was allowed by Him. Period. It's a gift. Nothing else. And so apparently this lawyer, like all of us, before we know the truth, we don't want to get too, we don't want to jump on the lawyer too much because that's you and that's me at the end of the day. So as we look as a, with a heart of compassion, we say, man, Lord, he, he just doesn't know any better. We hope that He caught it. At the end of the day, we hope we see him there one day and we're walking we're like, there he is. It's the lawyer that we read about in Luke. You know, and that's going to be super cool for us to go up to him. We hope that that's going to be the case. We don't, we, it doesn't tell us here. But the Lord speaks to him. And the guy automatically presumes, man, I've already accomplished number one. Let me go ahead. Tell me who my neighbor is so that I can kind of check that one off too. So who's my neighbor, he says. And so look who God says is our neighbor. Got your Bibles here? Let's pick it up. Notice what it says there. Luke chapter 10. Yes, thank you. Uh, chapter, verse 30. After the question is asked, who's my neighbor? So the Lord gives him a story. Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho 
and fell among thieves. By the way, the road from Jerusalem to Jericho was, um, and we know this from a, the writer called Josephus, um, was a notoriously horrible road to take. Uh, you would be foolish to take it alone. There were thieves on every, I'm going to say every block for communication's sake. Usually you would, you would roll down that road in a caravan or with heavy Roman protection because there was robberies and thievery going on on every, on every corner of that dirt road, if you will. This man was very foolish in doing this by himself. So listen to what it says. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Very compassionate men. Verse 31. Now by chance a certain priest came down the road. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Your attention, please. So here's the priest walking down the road. There's the guy there. The guy's probably sitting there squirming, struggling, half dead. What does he do? <laughs> Let me go on this side of the road. You ever done that? Pretended that you don't see that which is happening? Ever done that? Listen, let me share something with you in, in the Spirit. The Bible says that if we see our brother and our sister sinning and we don't say something, their blood is on you. Because it's very convenient to do this. I don't want to ruffle any feathers. I don't want to say anything. The Bible says, no, 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 I've exposed it to you, number one, so that you would pray, number two, so you would say something. And so this guy, this priest, he sees this man in trouble. Yes, listen, it's in the physical. The parable's in the physical. And he decides, let me go across the street, pretending that I don't see anything. How is it that the monkey is, right? Hear nothing, see nothing, right? Say nothing, right? Notice. Verse 31, now a certain priest came down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. Both of these leaders of the Jews didn't want to do anything about it. Notice this, verse 33, but a certain Samaritan, you know that Samaritans were looked down upon by the Jews, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, that guy laying there, he had compassion. What did he have? Compassion. Tell me again, what did he have? Compassion. compassion. Something that is just, that it can only come from the Lord. Verse 34. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And he set him on his own animal. Implication, he, the Samaritan, walked, brought him to an inn and took care of him. On the next day, when he, the Samaritan, departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. Verse 36, here's the question. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? The answer, verse 37, and he said, he who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, the lawyer, go and do likewise. Your attention, please. So I want to show you. We just read it. So Jesus said, hey, who is really a neighbor? Now, you know we think of neighbor as the guy that lives next to us, right? Or the lady that makes, whatever might be the case. But Jesus said, listen, because I say love your neighbor as yourself, well then, who is it that's, that are going to be declared a neighbor by the Lord? Is it you? Are you the neighbor? Well, the question is, well, I don't know, am I? Well, I don't know. Are you showing, remember the key word? Mercy, but that wasn't it, but compassion? <laughs> Mercy, thank you. That's who the Lord labels that's who the Lord stamps neighbor. Those of us, I'm putting myself in there, prayfully that's the case, that have compassion. Say amen if you're with me, family. Because this man, he was very clear on saying, hey, I want to know so that I can do. 
I want to know so that I can do, because at the end of the day, you recall what we started with? Oftentimes, we tend to believe that we are just trophies sitting there in the stand all polished up. And God says, listen, I've saved you to use you. I've given you to give. I've said it to you a hundred times and I'll say it to you a hundred times again. The man who waters will be watered himself. Our lives are, though, are, are, to, be, to, be a, our lives are to be a picture of giving. A lot of us, we hold on to that which we got. And i got to tell you, I'm guilty of it at times myself. I'll hold on to that which we have, which I have. Not wanting to let go. Sometimes it's uh, monetary. Sometimes it's money. Sometimes it's of my, of my um, physical being. It's of not wanting to, to get out of my comfort zone. And God's saying, listen, it's about compassion. It's about giving. Got your Bibles there? Put a marker there. Go to Matthew chapter 6. Go to Matthew chapter 6. I want to show you something. As this is the portion of scripture that God has been really dealing with me with lately. He's been having me uh, kind of focus in on this. God has been showing me a couple of things. Pray for you there in Matthew chapter 6. And let me have your attention please once you get there. Say amen when you're there. Amen. Um, God has been showing me. I shared this with my wife a couple of days ago. And we're going to close in a couple of minutes. Um, God has been showing me uh, my mind. He's been talking to me about my mind. See, I'm one of those guys that uh, I will, you know, go off on my mind quite a bit. I'll have dialogue with people in my mind. They're not there, by the way. <laughs> but in my mind, I'll be walking my dog and I'm already thinking about what I'm saying to them. Say amen if you're with me. Am I the only, am I the only fruitcake about that? No, not fruitcake. Am I the only nut, <laughs> nut so with that? Okay? And so I'll have this, like, dialogue going on. And next thing I know, like, I'm mad. <laughs> They're not even there. But I'm like, blah, 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 blah. and the other day, this is what happens when you get old, by the way. My wife looks at me and says, you're talking to yourself. And I was like, oh, my God, I am. I'm becoming my father. I'm becoming my earthly father again. I was talking to myself. I was having this dialogue going on in my mind. Number one. Number two, here's another one being transparent with you. Sometimes I'll go off in my mind imagining scenarios that aren't really even happening. <laughs> they haven't happened. They probably won't even happen. And there I am, man. And I'll even get mad. <laughs> but it hasn't even happened. <laughs> but yeah, but in this coconut, it's happening. And, you know, I've been asking, one of our prayers have been, you know, you've been here. Lord, we're small, but we want to be deep. Amen? Lord, we're small, but we want to be big when it comes to maturity and, and, and focus. And that every man and every woman here would take their rightful place when it comes to God. In other words, men, teachers of the word. Men, leaders. Women, teaching the younger women. Say amen if you're with me. Right? That's what the scriptures say. And so our prayer has been, Lord... This is who we want to be. You know, we, we want to move from glory to glory in that we are those type of individuals who are maturing and growing. And wouldn't you know that the Lord would start with the pastor? And he's been showing me, buddy, your mind is like, I don't want, you know, it's like you're, you're not doing well with that. And so what I have started doing that, when it hits me, because sometimes I'll go on for like half an hour and then I'm like, okay, no, let me stop that. Right? Is that I, I told my wife, this, my mind is, is um, I've committed to my mind, listen, being f all about Jesus. Now, when I start with that nonsense and I catch it, I stop it. And I start just um, uh, thinking and, and pondering scripture. You're my rock and you're my fortress. You're my high tower. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Right, So I, I just shift my attention to the Lord and to what He's done and to what He is doing and to what He's going to do. Say amen if you're with me, family. Because the Bible says don't be transformed by this world, but let your mind be... Um, uh, don't be um, conformed to this world, but let your mind be transformed. 
And wouldn't you know that it's taken me this long, but I'm finally beginning the walk in getting this mind, this, all this junk away and focusing strictly on the Lord. I don't speak to you ever from a point of perfection. I'm speaking to you from progression. Say amen if you're with me. Amen. Right? So I'm progressing. And so the Lord's been showing me, look, you're a lot of times focused on that which is going to happen, and you don't even know if it's going to or not, and you're not focusing on me. Right? Yes. God wants me to focus on right here and right now. God wants me to do, not to vacillate on what might be. God wants me to what? Do. Right here, right now. This is what God wants me to do. Period. He doesn't want me vacillating on the future because I don't know what's going to be, what the case is going to be. So let me share Matthew 6 with you. You got your Bibles there? Look at verse 25. Listen to what he says. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Therefore I say to you, the Lord speaking, do not worry about your life. Well, what do you mean, Lord? But he says, do not worry about your life. What you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? So notice what he's saying now, and don't, don't get it confused. It's not like if I'm not going to take a shower, for goodness sakes. No, 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 no. He's saying, look, do not sit there and just go over and over and over. Don't let this be a source of burden for you. Verse 26. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more value than they? Which of you by wearing can add one cubit to his stature? You can't. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Verse 30. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven... Will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Verse 31. Therefore do not worry, he says, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? Verse, for all, verse 32. For all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Your attention, please, before we close. Listen. He wants you to do. What does he want you to do? Do, not think. Not vacillate on, on, he wants you to do. What am I to do? What are you to do? Here it is. Verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. What are you to seek first? What are you to do? Seek first what? The kingdom of God and his righteousness. I know so many people, well, including myself. Sometimes we don't seek God. Sometimes we're, we're, we're interested, we, we'll, we will, let's let it be. Verse 33, I don't want to get in trouble. Verse 34, there, verse 34, therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Go back to Luke. And so God says to us, what I want you to do is to seek me and my righteousness. And everything else shall be added unto you. I don't need to worry about anything else. What I need to do is do him. To follow Him. To do Him. And He's going to add everything else. And so again, maybe this word is for you today. Maybe it's not just for me. For some of the minds that, that have become such a, uh, a, um, a playground, if you will, for the enemy. He has a field day with us. He has us worry about things. And, 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 and we become unfaithful to the Lord. Because we worry about the fact that He's not going to provide. We become unfaithful to the Lord um, because of the fact that I'm worried that fill in the blank. And the Lord says, man, if you just do what I ask you to do, which is seek me and, and, and my kingdom, my righteousness, I'm going to take care of everything. You're not going to be in need of anything. I'm going to handle it all. Let's close up shop. Luke chapter 10, verse 38. Now it happened. As they went... And he entered a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. I remind you that this is uh, Martha, Mary, and brother Lazarus. 
Notice verse 40. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. Um, can you say tattletale? <laughs> right? This is what she's doing. Lord, I'm doing all the work. And it's for you, by the way, Lord. And, and, and nobody's helping me, Lord. And look at my sister. She's not helping me. Go tell her something, Lord. Tell her something. Tell her to help me, Lord. As, after all, Lord, this is for you. Right? I love this. Look at Jesus answered. But Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha. When the Lord says your name twice, pay attention. Right? Martha, Martha. Come on now. Seriously? Martha, Martha. You are worried and troubled about many things. You remember Matthew chapter 6? Remember Matthew chapter 6? Stop worrying. Stop letting your mind go buck wild. I want you to focus on me. Verse 42. One thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. You remember what Mary was doing, right? She was sitting at... Jesus' feet. Oh, I don't doubt that Mary did laundry. I don't doubt that Mary watched the dolphins. It's okay. No worries there. But she did what she needed to do first and foremost. She sat at Jesus' feet. Family, as we close, I want to remind you, time is short. It's time for us to take our rightful place that God has set up for us. Period. We can't be vacillating anymore. We can't be just wandering in the dark anymore with our hands up and our eyes closed. God has a plan and a purpose for our lives. And more than ever, man, we need to run like we've never run before. And it starts with this. The one and only thing that He requires to seek Him, His kingdom, and His righteousness first. That's it. The minute that the mind starts going crazy, stop that right then and there in the name of Jesus. Start quoting Scripture. Get back to, to, to proclaiming His goodness and His blessings in your, on your life. There's going to be, listen, there's going to be a spiritual mind cleansing that's going to happen. And what a beautiful thing that is, because some of us are in desperate need of that. This guy included. Listen, let me even take it a step further. There's going to be a physical healing of your life. Because it's all, the, the Lord works from the inward out. It's never from the outward in. He, lo he works from the inward out. Say amen if you're with me, family. Don't forget who you're going to pray for this week. There you go. Usually I tell you, don't say nothing. We're praying for Sue. We're praying for Sue. We're closing right there. Um, I remind you that if you're here today and somehow, some way, um, you don't know where your eternal life is going to end up, I want to remind you that Jesus Christ loves you. So much so that He gave His blood for you. The Bible declares that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever would believe on Him would not perish but have everlasting life. Not about a religion. Not about um, Mother Mary. No offense to anybody when it comes to that. Not about uh, this little saint or that little saint. The one who died on the cross for you and for me. Jesus Christ. And the way to enter into relationship with Him is to acknowledge that in fact you have sinned, which is the biblical word for that you have done wrong. Cheated, stolen, lied. Again, the list goes on and on and we're all in that, in that boat. To understand that we have sinned, to understand that there's a way out and it's through God's Son, Jesus Christ, to accept that. And it's a real simple prayer. Lord, I recognize that I'm a sinner. I recognize that I've done wrong. I recognize that you have um, paid the price for me. 
I accept that free gift of salvation, Lord, that you offer me. I accept it. Come, come into my heart, come into my life. And let's do life together from here on in. It's as simple as that, family. And you don't even need to understand the totality of it because if the truth be told, this guy got saved 27 years ago and I don't think I still understand the totality of it. But I know that it's right and I know that it's real. Say amen if you're with me. Amen. So make sure that you do that today and you, and you just get that, get that done and over with. That your eternal state is stamped, sealed, and delivered. Bottom line. If any one of you needs prayer, um, if you're a lady, and Nati will be back there. Um, Darius is available. Sue's here also. Um, Christy, if any one of you needs prayer, you're a lady, come please. Let's pray together. If you're a male and you need prayer, I'll be here. Come on up. Let me pray for you. Um, and let's just roll like we've never rolled before. Amen, family? Let's um, have a point of contact and let's pray. Lord, we thank you again for this beautiful day. We thank you that your word is true, Lord. We stand by it. We stand on it. We thank you, Lord, that um, we are yours. We thank you that we've give, been given the opportunity to love because you first loved us. And Father, we, um, we give our hearts to you today, Father. If any one of us have been slacking in any way, Lord, including myself, we, um, we turn from that and we turn to you, Lord. We want to know the joy of your salvation in the Spirit, Lord. We want to taste, Lord, and see that you are indeed good to us. We want to continue to grow and mature, Lord. We want to love you, Father, because you first loved us. Thank you again for this time together, Lord. And we end proclaiming with our voices that which is in our hearts. That Satan has been defeated, we have been redeemed, and that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. All praise and all honor be to you, Lord, who reigns on high. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen, amen and amen. Don't forget